It's 98.1 The Hawk, Binghamton's number one for New Country. So if you don't know, this upcoming Sunday night, Floyd L. Mains Arena, it's back. It's better than ever. It is WWE Live. A whole bunch of superstars coming. Roman Reigns, The Miz, Braun Strowman, and former Raw Women's Champion, former NXT Women's Champion, it's Bailey. How you doing? Great. And you're right. It is going to be better than ever because it's the coolest thing on the universe right now. So get your tickets. Absolutely get your tickets. I think I've been to like 15 shows in a WrestleMania, and it gets better every single time I go. Whoa. You're hardcore. And <laughs> WrestleMania, that's, that's the top of the mountain right there. Yeah, I went to the one in the Meadowlands, and I sat all the way up top, and it was still amazing. It was crazy. Right. Yeah, it doesn't matter where you sit. Just a great seat in the house. All right, so I've been following wrestling for a couple of years, and probably in the last two to three years, I would say women's wrestling – has exploded, uh, made some massive strides, and obviously you're an integral part of that. What do you attribute the most to the giant, you know, explosion of women's wrestling? Man, it's just been so, you know, in all the interviews that I do, like the fact that everybody brings it up and thinks that it's, um, acknowledges it, it's like so cool. It's, it's such an honor to be a part of being a lifelong fan and just all the women that's involved, like everybody... You know, the Bellas and Natty and everybody that was here before, and then the NXT group that kind of came up, came up together. Like, it's the coolest division that I've ever seen. So uh, being a part of it has just been so much fun. And kicking off the year with the Women's Royal Rumble, this, you know, in a couple weeks, um, in two weeks, actually, it's just amazing because we don't know what's going to happen in the next year. we still got the whole year to go, and there's probably going to be a whole lot of first times coming up. So you brought up the Women's Royal Rumble. I want you to take me back to the moment they told you and your reaction, you know, were you surprised or were you excited or were you kind of just every single emotion rushing into you at one time? <laughs> well, the actual, like, the real time we found out was in the ring when Stephanie announced it to the world, so we found out the same time that the world did. And um, it, it's weird because, you know, it's things that, Obviously, you hear rumblings and stuff and rumors, and you kind of hope for it, and you're like, well, it's possible. We have so many girls right now. Like, we can't do it. But you never really think it's going to happen because it's, you know, larger than life. But um, once Stephanie kind of came out and she started talking, like, the way she was and just kind of um, very serious, like, not herself, uh, it was I already knew something was up. I was like, <laughs> I think we're doing the rumble. Like, I'm telling myself in the head. I don't know if the girls, like, caught on, but I felt like I caught on pretty quick. And I already got emotional. Like, I could have cried, but I would try to keep myself together. And I had, like, tears and stuff. It was, I just couldn't believe that it was happening and being in the ring with Stephanie McMahon, like, announcing it to the world and all those women in there was, like, it was just very, I'm very proud to be a part of it. So you started out, you know, you growing up watching wrestling, obviously a huge fan. So you go out there every night, you're on the road performing do you have to take it in every time you hit the ring and still like kind of humble yourself and say, this is crazy. I grew up a fan of this and now I'm doing it. Like what is, is it hard to do that to take a step back sometimes and say, I'm still a fan. Yeah. It's, it's really hard to remember how far you've come, you know, when it, when you get on the grind and you're kind of just doing your thing, it all becomes routine. Um, as far as traveling and as far as going to the buildings and going to the gym and getting your rental car and all that stuff, like it can feel very routine. So I do have to remind myself because right before I got called to the WWE from NXT, I always said I will never let myself uh, be complacent or like forget the feeling of just how bad I wanted to be here. So I, I always constantly remind myself right before I go out, and I have all those like moments all the time where I'll like look out into the crowd while someone else is doing their entrance, and I see a little girl wearing my shirt, and it's just like I get emotional looking at her. I'm like, oh, this is so crazy. Or being on shows with John Cena and getting advice from him from about my match, like that stuff is still insane to me. So I hope it never goes away. That's I can't imagine one like just the first time you go out there and you see a person in a shirt with your name on it. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. It's so weird, and I always like. Why do you, and I always tell myself like, why do they care? Why do they cheer for me? I don't know why. <laughs> it's so crazy that they actually care about me, but like that literally used to be me. So I, I just am, can imagine how happy they are and how much fun they're having. The 25th anniversary of Raw is coming up soon. The Royal Rumble, a big couple weeks for you. 
Looking back at Monday Night Raw, what sticks out in your mind? Is there a certain moment where you became hooked or something that you kind of, you know, base your career off of like, I want to be like this person. I want to be like this moment on Raw. It was definitely the Lita and Trish rivalry that really, um, I always thought Lita was the coolest. And when she joined, like, when she was with the Hardys, I just wanted to dress like her. I wanted to look like her. Um, when I told myself I wanted to be a wrestler, like I wanted to wrestle like her. So I was going to go to Mexico and learn how to do her food salt and all that stuff. Like I, everything was about her. But once I um, saw her rivalry with Trish and the story that they told and the matches they had and um, they were given these main event spots, like that's when I really sunk my teeth into like the story and everything. And I always said like, I want this. Like I want someone to be as invested in my story as like I am right now. So that was always a number one goal, and I felt like I I had that with Sasha and NXT, but I'm still itching to get something like that here in WWE. All right, so before I let you go, I'll run through this again. WWE Live's coming to the Floyd L. Mains Arena. A whole bunch going on. Tickets are on sale right now. It's this upcoming Sunday night. Uh, there's a whole bunch of restaurants around the arena, so go grab some food and watch some awesome wrestling. Mm-hmm. I will be there. The Royal Rumble, the first ever women's one, is coming up. What's your strategy? My strategy... I told myself it from since Stephanie announced it. Number one, get Asuka out of there because she's undefeated. I need her out of there. And then get everybody together, whoever's in the ring, and we get Nia Jax out of there. And then I'll figure it out from not, from then on. <laughs> you got, I tell you, you got to go for the toughest people first. And right now, those yep. two kind of riding the wave, uh, two of the most <laughs> dominant superstars in the WWE. And I think, I think your strategy is pretty good, actually. Yep, yep, I got this, guys. <laughs> All right, Bailey. Well, thank you for calling in. I do appreciate it. This is my first ever interview with a WWE superstar, so I just want to let you know Aww. that. <laughs> Thanks. So I'm honored. I hope you had fun. I did. This was great. All right, everybody. Again, WWE Live, Sunday, January 21st at 5 p.m. at Floyd L. Mains Arena. Get your tickets. Go out there. Buy Bailey's shirt and root for her. Yeah, see you guys there.